So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this really cute puffer fish. All right, to make the puffer fish, you're gonna start with, uh, this is sculpted clay and air dry, and it's 3.8 ounces, just so it's, and you're gonna need a little bit of water and a stick or something you can use to etch the surfaces. And here we go. All right, so as you first get it, your clay is gonna be probably in a capsule type shape. And I'm gonna take about a third of that away. And I use my stick to help me. If you have a knife, you can use that too. Now the big piece, we're gonna roll into one big solid ball or sphere. And if any time with this clay, it starts to dry out, all you have to do is pick up a little water with your fingertips, place it in there. And then when you actually massage it, it will get the moisture in back into the clay and make it more elastic. And it helps for smoothing and cracking, but it's really important not to get it too wet. All right, so I've been making a sphere and you wanna try to get out any crevices, cracks, dents. You can smooth it with your hands and also with a little water if you need to, to help you get that more polished look. All right. Okay, now I'm gonna take one side and I'm gonna tap this sphere down so it has a flat surface. But this is a lot of clay. And if I was doing this in a kiln, this would psh, it totally explode. But since it's air dry, I don't have to worry about it as much. So what we're gonna do to help the drying process is I'm gonna go to the bottom part with my stick and I'm gonna poke holes. Now, you gotta make sure you do, the holes do not go all the way through. Okay, that should put some nice air up in through it so it won't be so bad. Sometimes after you've been doing that, you can, if you hold it too hard, you can lose its shape a little bit. All right. All right, now that we've done that, we have this part left over. And the, like I said, this clay, because it's air dry, it does dry out faster than normal clay. All right. So now I'm gonna do a big fat coil And one thing you'll notice with this clay, it is not super messy. It's a little messy, but it's not terrible. Okay, so I have a cylinder and I need my cylinder to be in two thirds.
So now that I have it in three parts, you know, unless you're just being so precise, I normally try to find the biggest piece I have to be my tail. And I'm gonna take that part and roll it into a fat coil. I'm gonna tap it down so I have a flat surface to work with. And the back end of the fish, he needs a little bit of a fat because these need to go together. So a flatter surface will help this. Now you're gonna take the stick and you're gonna score the etching of the clay is called scoring, the two pieces where it's going to come together. And now we're gonna put some water with our fingers and the two pieces, because if you don't, this clay, it will not stick. You have to slip and score. And you're gonna stick them together. I'm gonna wiggle a little bit. And this is gonna become the tail. And I'm gonna pinch it, cause I do want it to start to come together a little bit. And it's probably starting to remind you a little bit of a tadpole. And you can use your stick gently to help get in places your fingers don't want to smooth. And then you can create the tail. Now, with creating your tail, I'm just going to kind of pinch it a little bit. And you can see here, I need to smooth this a little bit through here. flatten it. And as I said, right now it looks a lot like a tadpole. <laughs> it really it's starting to look more like that at this point. But hey, tadpoles swim. All right. Now I'm going to put some pieces in here so I can separate the pieces of the fin and the tail. And you can shape it and twist them as long as you just be gentle, you don't want to make them come off. And I think kind of pull them apart and put them in different directions that makes it look more like a tail. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is he, our puffer fish needs really big eyes. So I'm gonna take one of the other two balls I have left this one then again i'm going to roll it into a fat coil so i can half my clay because i do want my eyes to be the same size and you should have a knife to use a plastic knife now that i have these i am going to go ahead and add a little water to each of the pieces and I'm gonna roll them into spheres, balls. There we go, those are nice. Okay, now I wanna add the balls onto my fish right in here and here because they're kind of on top of and on side of the head both. And then I need to do that on these two. Now, again, we're gonna add some water. And I'm gonna smush it a little and wiggle gently I'm not trying to change the shape of his eyeball, but I am trying to make sure that it adheres in there. So I'm just giving a little friction in there, so it'll do that. And 
we want it to stay, of course. Now, I'm gonna take the bottom part of my stick, not the sharp part, but the end, and I'm gonna poke and wiggle, and notice I'm holding my eye gently. It hasn't dried yet, so I wanna make sure it doesn't, I loosen it when I'm doing this, but I'm just trying to make a nice hole for the eyeball. All right, so now we've got the body, the eyes, and the tail. What's left here is gonna be for the fins on the sides here, on the sides of our little fish. And we might have a little fun making a mouth. Let's, we'll just see how much you want for the lips for your puffer fish. All right, so I'm putting a little more water in here. As I said, my clay, it's, it tends to dry out a little bit. So I'm always adding just a teeny bit so it's more workable, more elasticity. Okay, so now that I have that added, I'm gonna go ahead and again, I'm gonna half this. And I'm going to make a coil for each of these separately now. But I'm making this one a little rounder. There we go. And I'm gonna flatten one end so it'll attach. And then you can use your fingers to help you kind of shape the fin. You know, I'm trying to get them the same, but I know even on me, even I sometimes didn't separate it as well as I thought. And if that's the case, that's no big deal. It's clay. So try again. Because I really do want these to be more matchy. I don't want one fin bigger than the other if I can help it. I'd be a little more cautious of that this time. Okay, I think we're gonna have a better success this time. Back and forth, like you're making a snake, a coil. Tap, tap, flatten. And shape your little flipper. with your fingers and that's just gentle pressure. Tap, tap. Okay, now we're gonna add the fins. So here on the side, I want them down at the bottom here, and my clay is starting to dry out. I think I have some older clay that I'm using. I think yours should be fresher than this. On the flat part again. And again, this is called slipping and scoring. It's the way you glue pieces of clay together. And then I'm gonna Squeeze it just a little bit. And if you want, you can use that, your thumb or a stick here to kind of help blend it a little bit. Okay, now on the other side. And your piece is pretty heavy. And as I said, if we were doing this in a kiln, it wasn't air dry, there's no way we could have left this big solid piece here. It would explode. All right, so a little water, a little water on those etchings. We're gonna put it down there. Push it together.
So, now that we have most of our fish, the only thing we still need to do is sometimes I like to clean things up and we're gonna add his little mouth. So to clean it up, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some little water on my finger and smooth things out. Like I said, I can use the stick to help me. Just be really gentle. All right, now it's time to add his mouth. So they have kind of a little mouth, but they kind of look like they're smiling puffer fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my stick and put a little smile. And then I'm gonna put my stick and I lift open just a little bit of pressure. And what this is doing is it's opening his mouth. And when he dries, we'll be able to paint that. So he has a dark colored mouth. There we go. And so there's his mouth and his eyes and his nice puffy little body and his little flippers and tail. And again, I'm gonna make sure if I need to gently poke a few more holes in here again, I just have to be very careful. I don't want it to go through or change the shape of my fish when I do this. Okay, and that'll help him dry out. So, we're going to let him dry for overnight, and then the next day, it's best to turn him upside down, and at this, as long as he's hard enough on top. I found mine was dry enough in one night, and then I flipped him over so he could dry out this way the rest of the time. So, after this is all dry and ready to go, you can paint your fish. And so you can paint your fish any color you want. There's the side of them. Uh, you can do some variations of different shades of colors. You can put polka dots. I put the polka dots with the end of a paintbrush. That just seemed to work good. Also, um, normally when I'm po polka dots, if I'm not using the end of a paintbrush, I, one a little bigger, you can use an eraser. Those work well. And I use black paint inside here and in the mouth. And then we're about to be ready to add our face here. Uh, we have traced a nice square. And along with our square, we've also done some water that fits in here. So let's see here, where's my inches? Here it is on this one. There you go, so it's about four. This is a four inch square. And you can paint these and cut them out and then use glue to glue this on top. And then I use regular Elmer's glue just to glue my fish down onto that. So it's two layers of this with our fish glued on. So there you go, that's how to make a puffer fish.